Okay, this is going to be a short video just to take up a couple of questions from page 171 of chapter 4, Calculus, and I'm going to do number 10 and number 12. So number 10 says, use the derivative to show that ax squared plus bx plus c for a is greater than 0 is decreasing when x is less than minus b over 2a and increasing for x is greater than minus b over 2a. So I've never assigned this question myself in my class, so I start thinking, okay, well, um, minus b over 2a, if a is greater than zero, this is a parabola that is concave up, right? It's just gonna go like this. And you should remember that x equals minus b over 2a um, was a formula that you used to find the x-coordinate of the axis of symmetry. So that means when x is minus b over 2a, I have to be like right here, right? That's minus b over 2a. So I want to show that it is decreasing, which makes sense. The function is decreasing for x is less than minus b over 2a and increasing when x is greater than minus b over 2a. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the derivative. Um, so I'm going to say, well, f prime x equals, and I take the derivative of this, and I'm going to get 2ax plus b. And if you were graphing, you would say, okay, so for critical values, set f prime x equal to 0. And I think you can see what's going to happen here. If I say 0 equals 2ax plus b, then minus b equals 2ax, and minus b over 2a is equal to x. So that means what we've already confirmed here, or, or decided upon, was that the, the um, x-coordinate of this critical value is minus b over 2a. So now how am I going to prove that it is decreasing using calculus? So what I decided to do was to make a first derivative test, which means I'm going to make a number line. I'm going to label it f prime x, and I'm going to put minus b over 2a on it here because I know this is going to be this point here. Right? This is going to be the minimum value, the x-coordinate of the minimum value. So I want to show that this is going to be decreasing and this is going to be increasing. So I said, okay, well, if minus b over 2a is my value, and it's a little complicated because, right, it's got letters in it, and I don't want letters in it. So I said, okay, well, what would be a number using b's and a's that would be larger than minus b over 2a? And the first thing I thought of, well, as long as it's positive, it's going to be this way on the number line, right? It's going to be to the right. So if I picked simply um, b over 2a, so let's say I'll make this point here, this is going to be b over 2a, and I want something that's smaller than minus b over 2a. Now, if you have trouble thinking what you should use, and I'm telling you I'm going to use minus b over a, what I did in my head over on the side here was said, okay, what if what if b was equal to 2 and a was equal to 3? How would I make this smaller, right? How do I make it smaller? How do I make it bigger? Well, it's easy to figure out how you're going to make it positive because obviously a positive b over 2a is going to be bigger than minus b over 2a. But what do I put here? So I said, okay, well, if this was b, b was 2 and a was 3, then minus b over 2a would have been equal to minus 2 over 6, which is minus 1 third. So to make sure that you've actually chosen something that is less than minus b over 2a, I said, okay, well, what if I said minus b over a? What would that be equal to? So I put in my 2 and 3, so I have minus 2 thirds. So minus 2 thirds, obviously on a number line, is like minus 0.667, right? And this one, minus one third, would be minus 0.33. So you can see I am to the left, and I'm going to use these two values to show 
that it is the function is decreasing or increasing. Now, how do you do that, right? That's the next step. Well, using the first derivative test, so I use the first derivative, which I've already calculated here. So I have 2ax plus b. And now I'm going to check this value and this value. So I'm going to say, well, what's f prime at minus b over a? So that would be 2a minus b over a plus b. And obviously these a's could cancel out and I would have minus 2b plus b, which is minus b. And that's great because it's negative. So the slope, this is f prime, by the way. So I'm doing the slope, I'm checking the slope. The slope is negative, so that means it is decreasing on this side of the function. So if I want to show if it's increasing, like I said, I picked b over 2a, so I'm going to check what's f prime at b over 2a. And that's going to give me 2a times b over a, no, 2a, I had 2a there, sorry, and then plus b. The two a's cancel out, I get b plus b, and I get 2b. Hmm, well, 2b is positive. So that means the slope on this side will be positive, and there's your proof. Okay, let's go to um, number 12. It's a graphing question. They give you some, some information and ask you to sketch a graph that has the following characteristics. Now, when you go to sketch something like this, I always try to use the points first. Like obviously they're giving me some coordinates here. It's best to put those in first so that you know where you're going. Now it also said it has an absolute, absolute max of seven. It has a domain from minus two to five and it has a minimum of minus three. So I want to know, I want to make sure that my graph is going to, I'm just freehanding this so good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's my highest point, minus one, minus two, minus three. There's my lowest point. And I have local extrema. So that means within a certain area, it is either a minimum or a maximum, a local, not an absolute. Absolute is the highest, that these points here, absolute max of seven. Now they don't give you the X coordinate, right? They just tell you it's going to go to a, half, a height of seven. Now the other thing I need to make sure I have on here is my domain. So I'm going from minus two, one, two, three, four, five, minus two to five. That's all, I'm care about. That's all I care about here. Okay, so now I'm going to put on those points. Let me see if I can add some color here to make it a little, a little brighter. This works. Okay, so local extrema is zero, four, zero, one, two, three, four. I have a point right there. And the other one is three and minus one. One, two, three, minus one. Okay, so I have two points. Now it says it's decreasing between zero and three. So that's here to here, right? From here to here, it's decreasing. So I'm going to make it decrease. And it is um, a minimum value there, so I have to kind of curl it around here. Now it says the function is increasing everywhere else. So increasing means it has to come up from here and it has to go up from here. Remember, you're reading from left to right. So here, if I said, okay, it has an absolute maximum on this domain of zero to five of seven. So at five, I'm going to put my maximum here and I'm going to bring this function up like that. So this is going to be the coordinate five, seven. It's not pretty ink. It's supposed to be to be writing on black paper. And the other one, the absolute minimum, so I'm gonna put that here at two, minus two and three, minus three. So here's my, my uh, absolute minimum there on this interval. Okay, it didn't say it was a max or a min. This function could be going up like this, and it could be going down like that. Okay, so that's uh, the solution to number 12 and number 10 on page 171. And um, I hope that helps you out. And please make sure you subscribe, like, share, tell your friends about the channel. And um, thanks for watching. Bye for now.